What's going on boys and girls? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another install on my STI swapped GC8. Today what we're going to be installing is the Ghetto Dome 4th Cylinder Cooling Mod. And you all heard about the horror stories of Cylinder 4. So after a lot of uh, researching and hands off to Dom, he did a lot of R&D and has a lot of data. And I will link you that to the description. And those are the things that I've researched and made me decide to buy this cooling mod. So first of all, let's talk about what the tools we're going to need to install this kit as well as what comes in the kit all right so the first thing that's going to come in the kit is going to be this hose with the fitting all right this is going to go into cylinder four which is the left head if you're driving so the driver's side head you're going to get a plastic t and four worm clamps and paper instructions the reason why i have to go with a plastic t is because i run green coolant and green coolant uh, might corrode the stainless steel other not like the Subaru blue coolant so if you run Subaru blue coolant you're allowed to run the stainless steel T if you don't run Subaru blue coolant like I do I run green 50 50 coolant I will be using the plastic one to avoid corrosion All right so that's what comes in the kit uh, Dominic rec um, recommends getting a the right stuff permatex which is the one minute gasket maker. I don't have that. I already have this sitting around. I need to allow 12 to 24 hours to allow that to dry, which is no problem because the car is gonna be parked in my garage. So we're in no rush for that. And the sealant is gonna go up in this fitting that goes into the head. You're also gonna need a 12 millimeter hex key. I bought this specifically because none of my hexes are this big. And that's gonna be the tool to go into that right there. And take that out this has I believe it's some kind of Loctite I think it's red Loctite so you're gonna really need to get a breaker bar up there or a big ratchet because uh, it's gonna be pretty tough All right so to pick it back off that again we're gonna be have a breaker bar just I'm pretty sure I could fit it in there uh, there's a lot of room uh, vertically not a lot of room horizontally so I think this should be would work uh, if not I have this one and a smaller one when it gets loose to break it off you're also going to want some acetone or some kind of um, fast drying solvent because when you take off the Allen key, you want to clean up the threads as much as possible because it'll be residue of the leftover Loctite. All right, so these are going to be the tools. Oh, sorry, last one is going to be an adjustable wrench. I'm going to be doing that to tighten it. Uh, again, remember that the head is aluminum, so you don't need to tighten it too much. There's no exact torque specs but you're gonna have the gas concealer and the fitting so don't tighten it too much uh, just until it's tight I would say and then that should be solid do not overstretch the aluminum head right so the first thing we're gonna be doing is gonna be draining the coolant Let's go ahead and get started on that the coil rad drain plug is right here and that's where we're gonna go ahead and drain all right <laughs> a brain fart with that explosion i forgot to relieve the pressure it's better it's, i i took off this cap which is relieves relieves way too much pressure uh it was supposed to be done with this uh little pressure relief valve uh, on the coil rad um but that was why it exploded on the bottom uh now we got it under control after <laughs> that explosion uh we're all good so let's drain this coolant all right so we drained all this coolant from the radiator drain plug. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just uh, pull the lower rad hose off the radiator and then just drain it from this hose as much as I can so that when I pull the, uh, when I cut the heater hose and pull the hex block, all the coolant's not falling on my face to make sure everything out from the block is actually drained. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, 
so I tightened up the lower rat hose. This, the coolant is done draining. So I took out the top mount intercooler. I honestly took it out more for lighting. Uh, might have more space on top. Honestly, did it more for lighting because I wanted to film it well for you guys uh, and girls. <laughs> and as well as uh, I had my rubber grommet that attaches the intercooler to this uh, bracket here. The rubber grommet broke, so I ordered new ones, so I had to replace that anyways. Uh, so that's why I just took it out anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and get underneath the car and check out that, and I'll show you the bolt that I'm going to, or the hex bolt that I'm going to be taking out now. So we're underneath the car right now. This is the subframe, and this is the axle, so you know where I'm at. There's the starter, uh, steering linkage, and there is the hex bolt right there. Hex key, and let's go ahead and take that out. This is the, so right here, this is the long black hose that's coming off the block. It's a metal hose, so you'll know which one it is. That's the longest one, and it's right above it. And then this is the return heater line, heater core line that we're gonna splice into, and that's where the mod is gonna tee off into, this hose right here. Here's the top view. And this is the hose right here that we're going to be taking out. This one right in the middle of the picture. And you can see its little bracket right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that hose out and I honestly think I'm gonna have access to the hex key from the top here and I could use the breaker bar. So we're gonna go ahead and try it. We're gonna take off this hose, get some room, because this is literally the only thing in the middle. All right, this is the one we're gonna take off and this is the hose we're gonna go into. All right, so that 12 millimeter hex key bolt in the head is right below my hand here. Um, like I showed you from the bottom, I uh, can't really get a good angle from the bottom, but I can get a really good angle from up here since I took out, took out the intercooler. Uh, so I'm gonna go from here. The hex key is already in the bolt right there. All right, you can see where the hex key is now. So I'll go in from the top so you can see. So here's the, I'm coming from the driver's side fender, going in. And that's where the hex key is on the driver's side head, All right? So it's on the breaker bar, it's all good. So let's go ahead and pull it towards us and that's gonna loosen it. All right, that was easy. So we got the 12 millimeter hex key out of the head. Um, as you can see, there is an OEM uh, Loctite. So what we're gonna do is go down there now, uh, maybe with some acetone and a, a, a wire brush, and gonna clean out that as much as possible. That's what we'll do next. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we got the hex bolt out. We're just gonna use a little wire brush. I'm gonna just brush out the edges and make sure there's no, much, no more of that OEM Loctite to make sure it is fully clean and when we screw in the four cylinder cooling mod and add the gasket maker it has a very clean bond and prevents leaks and then just hit it with some acetone wire brush again and clean it out that's what we're going to do that's the next step all right So now we're at this stage. So what we're gonna do is cut it, this hose per the instructions of six and a half inches. So let's do that first before screwing this into the head. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Hose now, and let's go ahead and install it in the car. Put on this onto the threads, put the Permatex Ultra Gray onto the threads, tie this, screw this into the block, tighten it a little bit. Again, remember not to go too hard because it is an aluminum head and you don't want to over torque that. It'll ex ruin the head, all right? So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna go put on the T-fitting, slice the heater hose, 
and we're all done. We're gonna let that dry for 24 hours, come back, bleed the cooling system, and that's it. And that's the fourth cylinder cooling mod. All right, here we go. All right, so next, uh, we're gonna do the T-fitting. This is the last step, and we'll let it dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the remaining hose that I cut off the cooling mod. This part is gonna go onto the hose that's coming off the block, the black metal hose. And it's gonna go T-fitting. And then it's gonna go the rest of the heater core line. And I'm gonna cut it uh, one inch past where it was mounted on, or cut one inch off the hose. So it's gonna go, if you're coming from the firewall, the order is gonna be the regular hose, cut one inch off. T bolt, T T connector, then the rest of this going onto the black hose, and then of course the bottom one's going to be the cooling mod. All right, so uh, I have a pretty good angle. You're going to be able to see everything, and I'll show you a finishing product when it's done. So put everything back together. Uh, next thing we're gonna be doing is bleeding the cooling system. So highly suggest getting one of these uh, coolant um, burping sun funnels. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, bleed the cooling system. All right, so we're gonna do it from the top expansion tank. You do it from here, because this is the highest point of the cooling system, All right? So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm just gonna run through the burping procedure really quickly. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on YouTube. If you really, if it's your first time burping, we could refer to uh, another better video. Um, just kind of, kind of run through it, and this is the last thing we're gonna do for this install. All right. So here we go. Burping the cooling system is done. We are all set. The fourth cylinder cooling mod is finito. So go ahead and hope this video helped you out. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to uh, please like, subscribe, and share if you can. Uh, really hope that you guys enjoy this content. I really enjoy making it for y'all. It is a lot of work, to be honest. It's like double the task when you work on the car and film at the same time. Uh, but when, when you honestly, when I go back and look at the footage and film it, it's honestly worth it for me just to kind of uh, take this as memories and kind of a digital, uh, you know, build log on YouTube. All right. So go ahead. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching.